Welcome, everyone, to the Betting Pros PGA Podcast. I'm Pat Fitzmorris, joined as always by Mr. Bo McBrayer. On this week's show, we are going to provide a quick uh, recap of the Arnold Palmer Championship before we preview the so-called fifth major, the Players' Championship at TPC Sawgrass. And at the end of the show, we will, as always, make our one and done picks for the week. The Betting Pros PGA podcast is sponsored by Underdog Fantasy. Everyone knows that Underdog is the place to go for best ball fantasy football contests. But you might not have known that Underdog also has golf contests too. Sign up for Underdog if you haven't already with the promo code BPGOLF to get your first deposit matched up to $100. Plus, there is a special pick available for you in the lobby. More on Underdog and its golf contest a little bit later. Bo, we've seen some really short odds for Scotty Scheffler all season long, and that's no surprise. He's the number one player in the world. He's the, the best ball striker on planet Earth. Uh, he's won, well, he won two tournaments last year and finished top 10 in three quarters of the events he entered in 2023. Um, but you and I had not been recommending Scotty Scheffler outrights this season because we didn't think the value was there until last week. Bo, you said you liked Scotty last week and we're going to bet him. And uh, so congratulations on hitting that one. I couldn't bring myself to bet Scotty at, at what, plus 650, I think he was. But you were all over it. And uh, while it wasn't a super bold prediction, the fact is we hadn't really been on Scotty until he went to Bay Hill and, and you picked a great week to get off the sideline and bet him. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, what was give me uh, give me the rationale. It was it was a combination of a few things. I saw some encouraging signs in his putting even before he switched to the mallet putter, uh, which could have gone either way, honestly. I mean, guys like that are always searching for that missing piece to the puzzle. Scotty's game is so good outside of the putter that even a neutral putter would have won him that tournament. But instead, he gained almost four strokes. I believe he gained 3.89 strokes putting in the final round, which is why he obliterated the field. And if you have Scotty Scheffler out there gaining four strokes on the greens, nobody in the world has any chance to beat him, period. That's how good this guy is from tee to green and even around the greens. This guy, if even if he only loses one stroke putting around, he beats everybody in the world. So for me, it was, it was all about just putting that last little puzzle piece in place and him being a little bit lazy and growing the beard out. I mean, it's it's a it's a simple bias, but uh, when you can, we have to call him Scott Scheffler from now on because Scotty is all grown up, man. He's got the, he's got the shadow going, and I hope he doesn't shave it because it's like it's a playoff beard at this point. You got to keep the keep the good vibes going. Um, he said he was going to shave it though, so I'm a little disappointed. And for that reason, if he does shave it, I'm not betting on him this week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no kidding, man. It's like the NHL playoffs. You can't shave right. it once you're going and until Crazy. until you're out. Got to keep it. Um, but man, lest anyone wonder about the size of the sponsorship deals that um, these guys get from manufacturers, those mallet putters are going to be flying off the shelves of local pro shops this week. I mean, look what after the, the way Jailbird Scotty did after Wyndham Clark and Ricky Fowler started using it. It was it was off the charts. Yeah. So just to recap the Arnold Palmer Invitational for a minute, um, we had a six-way tie for the lead going into the weekend with Scotty Scheffler, Shane Lowry, Russell Henley, Wyndham Clark, Brian Harmon, and Hideki Matsuyama, all at minus seven. Scotty's odds were set at plus 250 at that point. And, uh, you know, I, I thought that was a little too short considering the caliber of the players he was tied with. Uh, I was dead wrong. So Scotty shot a 200 par 70 in difficult conditions on Saturday and went into the final round tied with Shane Lowry. 
And then Scheffler turned in just an absolutely masterful performance on Sunday. Bogey-free 66 to win by five shots over Wyndham Clark. Sir. No drama. No drama whatsoever coming home. Um, Scheffler's 15 under was the lowest winning score at Bay Hill since Rory McIlroy finished minus 18 in 2018. And considering the conditions, uh, Bo, for, for Scotty to go eight under on the weekend on a very difficult course with some breezy conditions and extremely firm greens. I mean, Bo, those were playing like U.S. Open greens. Um, man, that was impressive. Your thoughts on... Scheffler, his performance, and uh, the Arnold Palmer Invitational. Well, for some perspective, it was a little bit more generous when the wind was down on Thursday, and that was when one other person shot 66. And so his Sunday round tied the lowest round of the entire tournament at 66. When the pins were tucked, the wind was up, the rough had grown out an extra inch and a half since they teed off on Thursday. The dude was surgical. He didn't miss fairways. He didn't miss greens. He just picked that course clean off the bone. And per another bit of perspective, not a single soul that was playing in his group with him, with Lowry, or anybody else in the, the last few groups was anywhere close to even par. They were struggling to make pars on in, in those conditions. And Scotty was tapping in pars and rolling in birdies from 35 feet. It was just, there was, there were two golf courses that day. And I hate to throw the tiger thing out there, but we haven't said that about any golfers since tiger, where you go out there and you say, Oh, tiger's playing just a different golf course today. Because and when he, when he crushed pebble beach in 2000, or when he crushed Augusta in 96. It was just like, okay, he's out here playing a Muni while everybody else is playing the actual golf course. And for him to make Bay Hill look like that, it's it's ridiculous. It's unbelievable golf. And I I I hate to say it, but it was it was Tiger like. It was I don't like I don't like that kind of hyperbole because Tiger's in a just in a uh, an era his his own caliber echelon whatever you want to call it but scotty keeps this up and he's going to be in those conversations a lot more often well maybe that comparison to peak tiger is somewhat apt considering how well tiger always played at bay hill i mean that was one of the events that he just dominated uh during his time there were a lot of events he dominated but bay hill um i I don't know how many. There was probably like a ten-year stretch where he won it like seven or eight times. He won. Um, he, he won Arnold Palmer eight times, and he also won an amateur event at, uh, for there too. So he won nine times in total at Bay Hill. Yeah, and now we get to talk about the Players Championship. We'll break it all down in just a moment. But first, our friends at Underdog Fantasy are betting letting excuse me letting you make picks on your favorite golfers all season long just pick higher or lower on selected stats for two to five golfers and you can win up to 20 times your money in a single day you can also make rivals picks choosing which of two golfers will shoot a better score in a round for instance golf picks can be combined with player stats from other sports too Go sign up at Underdog Fantasy with the promo code BPGOLF to get your first deposit match up to $100. Plus, there's a special pick available for you in the lobby. All right, the Players' Championship, Bo. As always, this event will be contested at TPC Sawgrass in the Jacksonville area. It's a Pete Dye course, perhaps the most famous and diabolical of all Pete Dye courses. A par 72 covering 7,275 yards. Scheffler. Coming off the uh, big win last year, a five-shot win. He's the defending champ. Uh, he won with a score of minus 17, five shots better than runner-up Tyrrell Hatton. Other recent winners here, Cam Smith at minus 13, Justin Thomas at minus 14. Uh, the tournament was canceled midway through in 2020 due to COVID-19. Roy McElroy won in 2019 with a score of minus 14. And Webb Simpson one in 2018 with a score of minus 18. Um, TPC Sawgrass is a relatively short course by TP, uh, PGA standards, Bo, but there's all sorts of trouble lurking, lots of water, 
lots of sand. I think 92 bunkers on the course, and some of them are like, you know, more than an acre large. Uh, the fairways are narrow, so players are going to put the driver away on a lot of these holes. And there are all sorts of mounds and hollows awaiting the players who miss fairways. The greens are POA. They're firm and fast. We saw very firm greens at Bay Hill this past weekend. And there's not much rain in the forecast for uh, the Jacksonville area this week. So expect difficult conditions when the curtain goes up on the Players' Championship Thursday. The weather forecast calls for temperatures in the mid to upper 80s throughout the event. There's a chance of afternoon thunderstorms on Friday, but conditions should be pretty dry otherwise. And there's going to be some breeze. Eight miles an hour Thursday, but then winds of 10 miles an hour or higher the next three days. Bo, this can be kind of a difficult for, uh, tournament to forecast because there are crooked numbers lurking everywhere. And there's a lot of variance when even the top players are carting double and triple bogeys. Driving accuracy is important at TPC Sawgrass. Precision iron play is important. Scrambling is important. What do you see as uh, the keys or maybe the key to playing this course well? Uh, it's a really, an, it's a thinking man's golf course. It's uh, you have to plan each shot with the next shot in, in mind. And the accuracy is important. The approach game is important. It's, it's really a whole bag type course, but the, the most important club in the bag is right up here. Because if you don't have a plan for each hole, for each shot, for each lie, uh, it's it's the kind of place that just tears you up. It's it's not if you're playing from the fairway and and on the green, you can shoot 15 to 20 under par here. It's a shorter course. Some of these guys can go out there and make a lot of good scores on this course, but one little slip up, and that's that's all it takes. And that's why there has never been a repeat champion at the Players, not one in 50 years of history. So that tells you the variability that's here is it doesn't matter how good you fit this course, how well you've played it in the past. Every time you go out there and play TPC Sawgrass and you're running around 18 holes, anything can happen. There is no such thing as a, wow, I can't believe that happened at the players because it's all on the table. Scotty Scheffler could shoot a 78 here. He could also shoot a 61 here. You don't know. Uh, this is, this is the kind of place where everything is ready to go. All bets are off. But we're going to bet on it anyway. <laughs> uh, and it is Bermuda Greens. You said POA, but I think your heart is still in California. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it, it actually is POA, Bo. I guess apparently used to be Bermuda, but there's some sort of issue with the greens. So these are POA Greens this year. Um, it classified as such right on the official PGA Tour website. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not exactly sure why... These are not classified as Bermuda greens. They're not but they are, that different. Yeah, it's you still have the same yeah. kind of grain and uh, get a little crusty in the afternoon, you know. <laughs> definitely, definitely. And uh, yeah, I mean, uh, Pete Dye was definitely in a sadistic mood when he designed this place. <laughs> and um, one of the interesting things I saw posted, someone, uh, it was a quote by Patrick Cantlay about the course. And Cantlay was talking about, you know, how a lot of players want, oh, they're tempted to, the the temptation is to bail out when you see water off the tee, but Cantlay thinks die made it so that like they're almost things more diabolical than water awaiting you if you bail out and miss. Like if you uh you know water right. on the right, if you hit miss left, uh then you're like you know you're headed for Bogeyville basically because yeah, they're this, uh, it, yeah it's very commonly classified as a positional course where yes. you you have to be in position to score birdies and if you're out of position you have to salvage pars or even salvage bogeys in a lot of cases because of how many penalty areas there are how many penalty areas are directly where you want to hit the ball and that's it's it is it's a it's a mind bleep type of course. Pete Dye is known for that across all of his designs, but this is his this is his Mona Lisa. This has all the nuance, but it's really it's as straightforward as it gets for a golf course because everybody knows where you're supposed to hit the ball. But the beauty of golf is 
you can't just go out there and place your ball where you want it to go. It's it's all about like being mentally fortified and executing the shots that you want to hit in the order that you're supposed to hit them. And that's why Scotty ran away with it last year because he was dialed in. He was so dialed. And that's that's what it takes to win the players. And it's it's kind of crazy that nobody's gone back to back here in the history of the event. That is wild, especially when you consider, you know, some of the big names who've won here. Rory mm-hmm. McIlroy, Scotty, Sergio Tiger. Garcia, um, Tiger, exactly. Adam Scott, um, everybody. They, all these guys yep. have just run through and it's weird. Yeah. So we'll get to the odds in just a minute. But first, if you want a chance to win a free one-year premium Betting Pro subscription, you need to subscribe to the Betting Pro's YouTube channel right now. Comment below on this video, and that's it. We'll be announcing a winner right here on the channel. So make sure to turn on those notifications so you can be alerted when new episodes are up and to claim your prize. You'll never guess who's favorite this week, Bo. It's Scotty Scheffler at plus 550. Uh as mentioned earlier, he won by five shots here last year. He's coming off a five-shot victory. Rory McIlroy is plus 1,200. Xander Shoffley is plus 2,000. Justin Thomas is plus 2,200. Victor Hovland, Patrick Cantlay, and Max Homer are all at plus 2,500. Will Zalatoris and Colin Morikawa are plus 2,800. Hideki Matsuyama is at plus 3,000. And at plus 3,500 are Shane Lowry, Sam Burns, Jordan Spieth, and Ludwig Ober. Which of these guys, uh, the guys with shorter odds, Bo, do you like at cost? Well, I don't like Scotty Scheffler at cost this week. I, I threw him out there because I got a plus 700 number last week. Uh, this week, with it being no, nobody's ever been a repeat champion, not even Tiger, not anybody. Nobody's ever gone back-to-back here. So for that very reason, the variability, the the wild things that happen at TPC Sawgrass, uh, I'm out on Scotty Shuffler this week. Uh, the next guy, Rory McIlroy, I'm completely out on because his wedge game has been atrocious lately. I mentioned it last week when I faded him last week is that what was going to get him into trouble was on approach and around the greens. And sure enough, it, was, it came to fruition on Sunday. Rory struggled mightily around the greens on Sunday at, at Bay Hill. And he's scuffling right now. For him to come in, he opened at a plus 1,800 number. He's down to plus 1,200 as people start to take advantage of that pretty pretty easy line to hit. For Rory, somebody who's a world-class player, He always has a puncher's chance here, but it's not his type of course. You can't overpower Sawgrass. It just isn't possible. Uh, Xander Shoffley is the guy I'm starting with at plus 2,000 uh, with uh, an honorable mention to the guy right next to him at plus 2,200, Justin Thomas. Those two guys epitomize what I want want in a player here, and that's an intelligent player who's lethal from 150 yards and in. What about Victor Hovland? not in top form right now, but he finished third at the players last year, ninth in 2022. Any interest there or just not a good enough price on the guy who really hasn't hit stride yet? No, I would say his odds are soft for for what kind of player he is. Uh, what's kind of held him back from winning has traditionally been his short game. But it's, uh, it's, it's solid enough where I feel like 2,500 is kind of short selling him i like i like that number for him uh, i probably won't bet on him there just because of the recent form and there has been some concern with his wrist not being at 100 percent. doesn't seem to take anything away from his overall game but i just think in a in a place like this where to, the winners usually just have an immaculate short game uh it's just it's not there for me especially compared to guys like xander and jt and even uh, Max Homa I and mean, all these guys that are playing lights out right now. Those those are the guys that I'd rather play at that in that range rather than just trying to guess when an amazing player might round back into form. I'm sort of mildly interested in Max Homa. Finished eighth last week at Bay Hill, 16th in his second to last tournament, which was the Genesis. Finished sixth at the Players' Championship last year and 13th two years ago. So... Decent combination of of course form and recent form. 
Um, he interests me. Let me ask you this, Bo. Of the two guys at plus 2,800, Will Zalatoris and Colin Morikawa, who do you think's the better value? Uh, I think Morikawa is a better value here because he's still a world-class player. He's still from tee to green as good as it gets. I think if he finds a hot putter here, which he tends to do well at these kinds of places with more undulating greens where he, he's as smart as it gets on the PJ Tour. I'd rather play him because people forget just how great this guy is, especially when things get tough. When he won that Open Championship and when he won that US Open a couple of years ago, it was just like, oh, the tougher it gets, the better Colin Morikawa plays. If the if the wind freshens up here and you start to get these high ball flight guys start to balloon up in the wind and find themselves in more penalty areas, Colin Morikawa is going to be the kind of guy that can be use his creativity and intelligence to 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 stay the course and and make this thing interesting. And uh, for him to be at the odds that he's at, and pretty much a lot of great players here are getting much softer odds than I expected because of how favored Scheffler is because of how short Rory still is. A lot of these guys are getting pretty disrespected by the books because everybody expects Scotty to win here. And I think that that's, that's an exploitative figure to pay attention to. I feel like Zalatoris might be the better value, honestly, Bo. Uh, fourth last week at Bay Hill, second at the Genesis last month. He's rolling. Uh, he's rolling. And the ball striking, I, I feel like he's been playing as well, T to green, as Morikawa, if not better lately. Um, the track record at Sawgrass isn't great, but not horrible either. Three previous appearances, 21st, 26th, and 73rd. Uh, but... Man, the the recent form, the slender man is back, baby. Yeah, he's he's absolutely the real deal. And I'm disappointed that I wasn't right about him last week at 30 to 1 uh, <laughs> because that was the guy that would have paid me the most money. Uh, but he he's done great. The problem with TPC Sawgrass is it chews up those unsure, not confident putters. Like his putting has been so much better, but he's still not a confident putter. And you absolutely have to be a confident putter on these greens because they have so much Fair. nuance to them. There's so many ways to attack these greens that can get you into trouble. Uh, just those five, six footers for par were giving Zalator's fits down the stretch last week, and that could kill him here. That's part of, part of the reason why he struggled here so much because it doesn't matter how good you are from tee to green. If you can't sink those putts, those very vital putts in that five to ten foot range, uh, I wouldn't put my money on him at all here, especially with that being in the back of my mind from the last couple of weeks where he hasn't been able to get over the hump because he misses crucial putts at every turn. Uh, the, here's the here's the main guy in this range, and you might already be ready to tee him up for me, but the last couple tournaments we've been like, oh, Shane Lowry here, Shane Lowry there, and he's just falling apart every Sunday. I think Shane Lowry wins this tournament. Really I think, interesting. I think he fits this place like a glove. He's as smart as it gets. He's crafty. He's a grinder. And he's got a little bit of a chip on his shoulder because he's kind of fallen flat with a chance to win the last two events. And I, I think that this is the kind of place where he can really exert his ability on this golf course. And he's played well here in the past. And I just, I, I can't get it out of my imagination that Shane Lowry is going to shut a lot of people up this week. Interesting. Yeah. I'd like to do it uh, with the way he's closed. I, I just can't bring myself to pull the trigger. Oh, he's but... burned. He's burned so many people last couple of weeks, but that's kind of where I was like, I was like, oh, I'm, I haven't been really on Shane Lowry last couple of weeks, but you know, now that everybody's kind of off him, it's, it feels, I mean, it feels right. He has mostly been on fire during the Florida swing and obviously so very comfortable. Right now. now he's made, makes his home in Jupiter, Florida. Again, we mm -hmm. talked about this with the wind at Bay Hill. Uh, the Irishman is not going to feel out of sorts at all if the wind starts oh. blowing. He loves so, it. So um, I like that. And I, I can't help but feel like Hideki Matsuyama's ball striking should play well this week at Sawgrass. Uh, the putting, you never know how that's going to be, but uh, he's had three top 10 finishes in this event and six 
top 25s. Um, let's take a look at the odds for some of the mid-priced guys, Bo. Wyndham Clark at plus 4,000. Tommy Fleetwood, Russell Henley, and Cameron Young are all at plus 4,500. At plus 5,000, we've got Siwoo Kim, Sahith Thigala, Jason Day, and Brian Harmon. At plus 6,000 are Corey Connors, Tony Finau, and Tom Hoagie. And we've got Ben on at plus 6,500. Do you like anyone from this group? Yeah, this group I'm going to pepper because this is one of, one of my most diverse betting cards of the year. Again, I'm playing into the variability of the tournament. So I'm playing a lot of different guys with different pieces of their game that I like to fit here. Uh, so I really like uh, Russell Henley here. He's been playing great lately. I really like Brian Harmon here, and I almost never like playing Brian Harmon, but Brian Harmon is exactly what I want on this course. This guy's nails around the green. He's nails putting for par. He's accurate. He's crafty. He's just the perfect fit at 50 to 1. I love Brian Harmon. And a little bit of a sleepy guy that people aren't really talking about who's been playing a lot better is Sahith Thigala. Sahith Thigala has an incredible short game. And the one kind of bugaboo about him beforehand was his approach game and his off the tee accuracy. He shored up both of those in a big way this season. I think big things are on the horizon for Thiala. And being being able to leave the driver in the bag sometimes is a good thing for a player who struggles to find fairways with the driver. So his ability to stick it close and, of course, get out of trouble with his short game that shouldn't go unnoticed. I really like Thigala. And then uh, Min Woo Lee, 55 to 1 for a guy that talented. I think I'll take a shot on a guy because if the conditions stay benign, Min Woo Lee has the firepower to to go up and get somebody like Scotty, even if he's having a good time. Yeah, um, this is a really interesting group. Tommy Fleetwood, uh, in his last five appearances here, 7th, 5th, miscut, 22nd, and 27th. Pretty good recent track record. Um, Jason Day has won here. Three top 10s, five top 20s. Tom Hoagie has finished 17th or better in five of his last seven events. And he finished third at Sawgrass last year. So this is a pretty interesting group of mid-range guys. Um, both there's some fascinating long shots in the field too this week. Do any of them jump out to you? Yeah, so anytime you're looking at a golf course that demands accuracy, I'm going to take a shot on Brendan Todd, who's coming in at plus 10,000. And then and Doug Gim's getting a little bit of steam in my model, but I just hate playing him on tougher golf courses. Uh, give me give me a little bit of Billy Horschel because this dude just plays Bermuda places so well. He's playing like crap the last few weeks, but uh, yeah, Billy Horschel's going to get a little bit of love from me. And I got to go right back to the well with our guy, Jake Knapp, because 130 to one for a guy that talented, it, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, hopefully that 12 uh, didn't rattle him too much on, was that Saturday or Sunday on the par 5 sixth at Bay Hill? Um, two water balls on the left side, blows his third. Uh, now he's hitting seven off the tee, blows one out of bounds, takes an iron, flares it like into the right rough and winds up making a 12. That was a... Uh, pretty wild but you know hopefully that didn't mess with the psyche too badly um i'm kind of interested in keegan bradley at 80 to 1 been playing reasonably well this year and uh has two top 10s in his last five appearances at sawgrass keith mitchell at 90 to 1 finished top 20 in three straight events and finished 13th in this event two years ago um boy I, what about our guy rio hisatsuni at 300 to 1 bow I mean, you could throw a shot kind of at him. I just don't know that he's his bogey avoidance for this hasn't course. been there. Yeah, yeah uh, I, our I don't guy, know if it's I, that. It's just being able to avoid the blow up holes on tough courses. He can score on the easier ones, but uh, this might be the place that he he puts some crooked uh, pictures on the scoreboard too. So it's it, for for me, it's an appropriate number. But I mean, if you if you really like the guy, uh, then do it. But. I don't know, man. I just I kind of picture him putting up some pretty big figures on a place Probably. like this. I don't want to miss on our uh, guy Akshay Bhatia when it finally happens for him. He's one hundred and eighty mm -hmm. to one, and uh, oh, like you that. know the I guy, like the guy who's dominating the old man's tour, Steve Stricker, uh, mm -hmm. three hundred and fifty to one. 
I mean, this guy Brand. like is contends every week on the uh, Champions Tour, and uh, three fifty to one for. And he's a guy as who, good as it gets around the greens. So, and it's yep. it's not like a tournament where distance matters. It's not a tournament where having great ball speed and swing speed matters. None of that matters here. But what matters is experience and being able to put a good score on the card. Steve Stricker is not going to beat himself, and that's that's more than you could say for half of this field. Half of this yep. field is going to knock themselves out trying to get cute. And the golf course will take that away from you very quickly. Uh, so Stricker is not a bad pick because of his short game, his ability to grind. Uh, yeah, you could take this place is just wild off the charts with variance. Again, say it over and over and over again. Uh, we have no clue what's going to happen at the Players Championship, but what we can gather is that if all things are kind of balanced and equal, we can pick out a prototype golfer that can fit here and just hope for the best. Um, but Batia is an intriguing pick because he's got the wedge game. And uh, for for a course like this, it's going to demand a lot of like half wedge shots to uh, knock down iron shots just to fit it in the right fl ball flight and to land in a very specific area of the green. That's the strength of his game. So I could see Batia. So what do you have on your betting card as of now, Bo? Lay it on me. This is, it's diverse. I have I have a lot going on here. I do have outright bets at the top on Xander Shoffley and Justin Thomas, and as well as top 10 bets on both. I'm going to drop down to Shane Lowry. with a, I'm doing the trifecta on Lowry because I feel so strongly about him this week. I have an outright, a top 5, and a top 10 on Shane Lowry. And then I'm going to go down to our guy, uh, Brian Harmon. I have an outright and a top 20 bet on him. Oh, I lost it. <laughs> there it goes. And my last bet on the card down here. I haven't decided on a lot of these long shots yet, but I am going to throw some more on Sung J M, who we did not talk about. Another good point and play point and click type of player here. Uh, but yeah, I'm I'm still formulating the final the final numbers, but Harmon is definitely going on the card with with Lowry, and then I'll probably the guys I mentioned earlier. I'll throw in some top twenties and some small outright bets. That's the the key is the more confident you are, the more you put on the outright, and then the less confident you are, or the more long shot they are, the more you put on placement bets. Yeah, that's reflected on my card as well. I am betting Scotty Scheffler, Bo. Uh, watching the way he putted with the way he's been hitting the ball. And I, I know that we have not seen a repeat winner at this event, but I feel like the way Scotty is playing, he could very well be the first. So I'm betting him outright. So you're I'm the Will reason why it's plus 550. <laughs> it's your exactly. fault. I'm betting Will Zalatoris at plus 2,800. I'm betting Keegan Bradley at 80 to one. I'm betting Keith Mitchell at 90 to one. And, uh, Excuse me, not betting Keith Mitchell outright, but I'm betting him top five at plus 1,800. Uh, and then I have small outrights on Justin Rose. Didn't talk about him, but at 100 to one, why not for a pretty good ball striker? Uh, Akshay Batia and Steve Stricker. Small outrights on those three. So, I think you just uh, like Stricker because he's from your neck of the woods. <laughs> he's a Wisconsin boy, of course. Uh, let's get to our one and done picks, Bo. Last week Yeesh. was a disappointing one for both of us. You burned a big gun on Victor Hovland. He finished tied for 36th, which was worth $88,375. I got a big fat goose egg out of Matthew Fitzpatrick, who missed the cuts. You're up nearly $2 million on me, and you are up first this week. Who are you taking? Man, how did the, only like six guys missed the cut? How did you pick one? <laughs> I, no kidding, no kidding. Elevated events where fifty guys. What was At it? At least 50, I made some money. <laughs> fifty out of seventy plus anyone within Yeesh. ten shots of the lead. Yeah, and I I somehow picked one of the guys who missed the cut. Go figure. Well, you probably guessed it. I'm going to go Shane Lowry. Shane Lowry, it is. <sighs> I'm going to save Scotty. I'm already betting yeah. him, uh, but I am going to go with. I'm going to go with Will Zalatoris this week. Willie Z. Going I, I with the Willie Slender Z. Man. I, I'm, I'm, I actually am hoping he does well for you because you know, I'm just a big fan of his game. 
And that is it for this week's show. I want to thank our sponsor, Underdog Fantasy. Sign up for Underdog with the promo code BPGOLF to get your first deposit matched up to $100, plus a special pick available for you in the lobby. And please come join Bo and I again next week when we will be previewing the Valspar Championship. Until then, so long, everyone.